anytime you incentivize uh, you know, profit or if, if you create a profit motive for a prison system, uh, that will give these corporations that run these prisons uh, incentive to pass these tough on crime uh, laws, like SB 1070 in Arizona is a perfect example of that. The private prison industry was behind that. Well, uh, we have an example in Ohio where the private prison system not only fails to save money, but it's actually terrible for the employees at these prisons and it's terrible for the inmates at these prisons. Recently there was a report done on the Lake Erie prison in Ohio and there is a high turnover rate among its employees because of the violence uh, that occurs uh, within that prison. So uh, according to one former correctional officer, Paul Reynolds, uh, he says it was common for us to speak about who was going to die first. They were afraid to get sued for any little thing so management basically tied our hands on everything. Within three months we lost that prison to those inmates. Um, now, Typically what happens in private prisons is they want to keep costs low, so they will hire uh, minimal staff, they won't pay them as much as uh, you know correctional officers would make at a public prison um, because they're not represented by unions, um, so they can take advantage of these employees a little more. And they also get rid of certain academic programs for the inmates. So the inmates don't have anything to uh, distract themselves with, and as a result, they become violent. They find ways to smuggle drugs into the prison. Um, the quote continues to say that the state report concludes that one-fifth of personnel at the Lake Erie facility are now leaving in the course of a year, typically replaced by less experienced staff, staff that doesn't really know how to deal with the violence within the prison. Now that's kind of a disaster in the making because yeah. when it comes to uh, being a prison guard, that's, that's a really difficult job, you know, and granted they, uh, they get a lot of uh, flack for the job that they do, but it's an important job and it is incredibly hard and you're there with a lot of uh, very difficult uh, inmates. So this concept that we privatize the prisons in order to uh, save money for the state, which I know was how this particular private prison corporation sold itself to the state of Ohio. It said, hey, you know, you guys are in a budget crunch. Why don't you sell us your prisons? We'll run them for you. You know, we'll get a little bit of, a, of an interaction going there. You could make some money, take some pressure off, and we'll take care of it. But the problem with going with privatization is that, you know, a good 30% of all of the revenue that would be going to this prison has to then be set aside for shareholders and does not go to the actual correctional systems, which, you know, we have standards and stuff that are not being met now. Yeah, right. absolutely. It's a huge problem. Go ahead. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, too. So it says that in this deal, uh, they get the prison, they get 20 years of managing the state's prisoners, and they also get a guaranteed 90% occupancy rate. In other words, if it's not 90% occupancy, yeah. they get paid they for 90% occupancy. Oh, okay. I thought it was, we well, have to arrest more people, obviously. Well, that's also the incentives there. Yeah, absolutely. No, 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 the incentive I understand is there. that. But it should be, I think it seems natural, the occupancy rate should be based on how many crimes are being committed, not on a business deal made 18 years ago. But going back to what I was saying, the private prison system creates a profit motive and mm -hmm. it means that the more people that get locked away the more money Corrections Corporation of America which is the corporation that runs this particular prison the more money they get to mm -hmm. make um, so that's definitely an issue what were you gonna say well, what I was gonna say is uh, so the way I would approach this story is not is, is, is not a way that I think the American public in general would would agree with me I would say you know it's unfortunate that this private private company comes in and they don't really care about taking care of the prisoners. And most Americans would then say, so, they're prisoners. You don't have to take good care of them. Um, but I believe that you can care about the care of the prisoners and be entirely selfish at the same time. Imagine the two scenario, scenarios. You have the, the, the previous scenario where these uh, prisoners are getting educated in different ways. They're doing job training. You know, They don't feel like they're continually going to be stabbed or they need to deal in drugs while they're there. Or on the opposite side, there's no classes. The only thing you can do is sell drugs to each other and occasionally get into a fight that might leave a few prisoners dead. Those people are not going to be in jail for the rest of your, their life. They're going to get out someday. Which of those two prisoners do you want walking the streets in 20 yes, years? Yes, one that's had rehabilitation and some exactly. kind of education and some sort of chance at being a productive member of society, right. at least a chance at being a productive member of society versus, as you said, you know, this the, the security has broken down so much at this particular institution that they're talking about having their friends go up to the wall, the prison wall, and toss duffel bags over, Full fill drugs. drugs and cell phones. It's incredible. They've given up. And, you know, uh, some of the former correctional officers are basically saying that this proves that there is no real enforcement 
uh, within the prison. In fact, uh, from the Huffington Post, uh, I learned some pretty devastating statistics when it comes to these private prisons. Uh, inmate on staff assaults more than quadrupled between 2010 to 2012, according to the inspection report, and inmate on inmate assaults nearly tripled during the same time frame. The number of assaults in 2012 was much higher than the average or comparable prisons in Ohio. Now, um, one thing that I should mention is, you know, not only are they having a hard time employing people who are experienced in this, but you know, the, the turnover is a huge disaster. Inmate on inmate uh, assault situation has gotten so bad that there are literally inmates within this prison that want to be placed in isolation for 23 hours a day yeah. for their that, own safety. For their own safety. Um, and there was a report done um, previously on this prison, and they found out that the inmates, like the conditions were so bad that the inmates didn't have running water or toilets in their cells, so they were defecating in bags, like in plastic bags. And basically the state came in and said, you guys need to fix this problem, and yeah. thankfully they did, but as you can see, there are still a lot of issues. And then one other point I wanted to make in response to you, John, was you said, you know, the majority of people who haven't been placed in these prisons would say, like, who cares? We're not in prison. These inmates obviously did something to get there. But keep in mind that they're trying to um, have a huge influence on our legislation. And they're trying to they're get... Lobbying. They're yes. lobbying. They're trying to get nonviolent people locked away behind bars so they can profit from it. Yeah. Okay, which is why things like the war on drugs continues to happen. It's because you have uh, Cor Corrections Corporation of America and GEO Group pushing to continue criminalizing marijuana use.